Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in RuneScape Dragon WoW. We're going to start by optimizing Windows, and after that we're going to look at your Radian or NVIDIA parameter. After that we will go inside of the game, and at the end we're going to modify the config file to unlock your FPS and more graphics settings. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings, and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing uh, I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the... Um, overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to deactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to deactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's 4 gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radeon driver if you have a Radeon car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. This is pretty much it for the NVIDIA fan reader. Now let's go to the Radeon one. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings, display first. 
Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, Fluent Motion Frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use Anti-Lag 1, this one is not good. Don't use a Radiant Boost. Radiant Chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be... 100% uh, utilization for me, so you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer, but sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed, just go to Assassin's Creed, and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in-game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging. But uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game, uh, first of all, you will see that currently you, you don't have any uh, graphic power reader. So you pretty much have basic stuff and the upscaling technique. So we're going to change a couple of stuff here. And after that, we're going to go in the config file where you can change a lot more. So first of all, for quality, just stay at medium. Frame rate limit, don't necessarily touch it. We're going to ch uh, change it uh, in the config file. The game is like at 140 when you use 140 over there. Uh, resolution, make sure that you're playing native. Upscaling mode, if you have an NVIDIA card, for sure, go DLSS and quality. This is DLSS 4, and honestly, it's pretty amazing. Uh, so you're going to get like 10 to 12% boost in your FPS, and the image quality is very good with the uh, DLSS 4. Display mode, make sure that you're playing full screen. Sharpness, something between 50 and 60, but again, it's question of like... Um, preference uh, if your game is too blurry go higher if it looks too much like an uh, instagram filter go lower if you have frame generation so rtx 4000 series or more recent definitely activate this one you can gain 40 percent boost in your fps if you don't have a dlss car i recommend to go with fsr so we're going to change for fsr pretty much the same thing go with quality over there adjust your sharpness and if you have frame generation definitely use it 
So now let's go inside of the config file. So now for the config file, you need to go to where you install your Windows. In my case, it's T drive, user, the name of your computer, app data. Make sure that you see uh, your hidden file to see that. Local, RuneScape Dragon Wild, save, config, and Windows. You want to open the game user settings. So the section that you really need to look at, it's over there. So my recommendation is use pretty much those par graphic parameter, view distance at two, anti-aliasing at two, shadow quality two or even one can gain like for each number, um, you can gain like three to 4% boost in your FPS, global illumination at two, Reflection and post-process go with one with this one and you're going to get a nice 5-6% to 6 boost. And honestly, post-processing in this game it looks very blurry, so don't go too crazy. Texture quality go with 3, honestly, if you have 4 gig of VRAM and more, it's not an issue. Effect qu uh, quality 2, foliage quality 2, and shading quality 3. After that, when you did that, make sure that you save. And what you want to do is go to properties and make sure that you put the file in read only because right now the game, if you change something or even if they just push an update, it's going to um, override your parameter in your game user setting. So definitely you need to lock it. After a couple of patch, if they push new graphic settings, uh, you can definitely just uh, remove your read only and just use the new game user setting because the game is in early access. So for sure, they're going to push some stuff in it. So normally with the upscaling technique and this, you should be fine to run the game easily. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.